In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add pagination to your React application, as you can see right here. So here you see a list of products and you can actually paginate by selecting the number of items per page. You can actually go to the next page and you can see that it updates with the items for the pages. And if I go back to page five, I mean five rows per page, I can go next, next, and all the way. It tells me the number of items and also the current page. Now, if you look at this one, which is this one, the one we did previously before now, there is no pagination here. So this is what we built before now. So I'm going to show you how to add pagination. And this is data coming from Spring Boot. And if you want to learn how to do this, you can actually look at the description. I put a link to the tutorial on this, on this particular uh, application uh, that we did before now. So we are going to go ahead to start adding pagination to this table. Now I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you are joining for the first time. Please hit on that subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any updates. So this crowd application, we will be adding pagination to this table. So this is the application, as you can see right here, it's running on port 3001 and there is no pagination as you can see. So let me show you the table. So this is the products table. I'm going to close orders. Now this is the products table and this is exactly what you see right here. So here there is no uh, pagination. We have the icon button for delete. We also have for edit. We have for delete, we have for edit. So this one is different. This is the different one I worked on before now. So I'm going to show you how to add pagination on a table that doesn't have any pagination. So you can see that this table does not have any pagination at all. And let me show you how to add it right now. The step-by-step -step on how to add pagination is also right here. This is exactly the step I will be following in this tutorial to show you exactly how to add pagination. So let's open the application, which is already open. So let's begin by taking the first step. I'm going to put this side by side with the tutorial. Okay, so let's follow the step by step. Everything we are going to be doing will be on this page, this page which currently displays right here. So you, get, you can see how it actually will, will be changing as we continue to make the updates. So the first thing we want to do is to define the states to handle pagination. So I'm going to define the states right here. I can actually copy and paste, but I'll recommend you actually type it out. So let me go to define the states uh, right here. So I'm going to define new set of states. It's going to be const page and set page. You know what? Actually, it's better to just copy and paste. When you have your time, please uh, just type it out. I think it's better we just save time and copy and paste. I copy and paste. So in this case, we define the states for handling pagination. There are two of them. We have the page and we have the rows per page. So page is the current page, like page one, page two. Rows per page is the number of items in the page. So in this case, we are starting with the rows per page to be five. And later on, we are going to define 10, 15, 20, in increments of five. So the next thing we want to define is a function to handle page change. So when a page changes, what happens? We are going to set the new page state to a new state as you can see so we are going to simply have a function that is called handle change page that is going to simply uh, set the new page to a new page so let me just go down and put all these functions somewhere let me place the functions maybe around here before the return statement so I'm going to place this function here and the next function it says is a function that handle change rows per page so this function handle change rows per page is going to update when the rows per page changes. The set rows per page is going to take the value of the rows per page that is selected. It could be five, it could be 10, it could be 20. So if you go back to the this one, you can see this, this is a rows per page right here. So if you set it, it's going to update the rows per page, okay? So this is a rows per page variable and the function to update it is this one. So let's copy this and paste it as well. Now what is happening here is we are setting the rows per page to a value and we are resetting the page to the first page. Each time you set, 
change the rows per page, we are going to reset to the first page. Now the pass int function takes an integer, which is the value that is selected. So if we go back to the list, the value that is selected here, but we are passing int because that comes in as a string and it takes the, the string value and also the base in this case is going to be base 10 and it's going to return a, a single integer, which is represents the number of rows per page. And then we are going to reset the very first page. Now, this is very, very important. This is going to be the product list of items that display in your page. This product list, let's stay with this page. This product list is always going to change or update based on the page that is selected and the rows per page that is selected. So we are going to slice this product list from the first page to the last page in the rows per page. So I'm going to write the function or the modification of this product and then I explain it to you. So this product, instead of having products.map, we are going to slice it first. So I'm going to say product.slice and we are going to slice from page times rows per page. We are going to slice from page times rows per page all the way to page times rows per page. And now we are going to add plus rows per page. So which means the total number of items that will display on that page, but for that for, for the particular page that is selected. Okay, so at this point we have sliced and we slice before we map. In that case, whenever the product, uh, the rows per page changes and the page changes, it will update what displays on the page. By the way, the product that the total number of products remains the same. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to now display the table pagination component, right? So we want to display the table pagination component. Table pagination component is coming from the material UI library. I'm going to copy it. It comes with a number of props that you can actually adjust. But for now, what you should care about is this rows per page options, which you can change to fit your requirements. So I'm going to copy this and we are going to place it just below the table. I'm going to go below the table just before the table container and we are going to paste this item. Right now we are ready to test our application to see what shows, right? <laughs> so let's save everything and let's go on to test, okay? So it tells us there is one error because we don't have table pagination. I think table pagination is coming from the same place as table, right? So if you have, let's see where table is coming from. So actually it's coming from, so we are going to add the import, import table pagination from, okay, it completes the import for us. So I'm going to now save everything and it gives us one more error. So let's go fix that. Oh yeah, so we are going to actually uh, import table pagination. Yes, so this should be it. So I'm going to save everything and everything loaded successfully. Let's take a look at the UI to see what we have. So going back to the UI. Um, okay, so I know where this problem is coming from. Um, so basically it's coming from this line that says count is equal to products of length. At the point of this count, we are having the products not available at the time. So we are going to check uh, if product is available and then if so, we are going to set the length. So let's use a tenary operator. So, okay, so here I'm trying another approach. So if the product is not equal to null, it returns product, else it's going to return zero. So before the product is retrieved, at that point, we don't want it to throw an error. So let it be zero. Once the product arrives, then we can now uh, set the products. And in that case, the count is actually going to be product.length. So I'm going to save everything and let's go back to the page. I'm going to refresh just to make sure we don't have any exceptions. So this exception that says um, div cannot be div cannot appear as a child of T body. This is a problem we had before, so I'm not I'm going to just overlook it. So now we have the product coming, but let's check our pagination to see if it works. So you can see pagination. So it has page five 
1 to 5 of 28, let's try to change, change it to 10. And now we also have 10, 1 to 10 of 28. Let's go back to 5. So let me go next. And you can see everything is working as expected. So this is exactly how to add pagination to your React table. I'm going to stop here. Every other thing works like edit, delete, and add new. Every other thing works as expected. The step-by-step -step is there on my website. Feel free to follow the step-by-step -step right here on my website. Now there's one more optional step and that is a case when you are using material UI that is greater than 5. In that case you need to install Bootstrap and you need to update the SX uh, prop of the table pagination component. So I'd like to stop here. I would like to thank you for viewing. Please remember to subscribe. Hit on that subscribe button below. Also like this video. And if you have any challenges following any of my tutorials, please leave me a comment. Remember coming soon we are having inventory ms complete inventory management system built using react front end and spring boot back end so we see in the next part